I'm stoked for this. Listen, I basically grew up watching YouTube and I didn't have a lot of family. I didn't have a lot of friends growing up. And so I just spent all my time watching YouTube. So over the years, I've collected a lot of channels that I subscribe to, and I'm really excited to share my favorites with you today. I'm gonna leave out some of the beauty channels that I've already talked about that you guys are already familiar with and just stick to some channels that you may not have heard of. But first, I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate more music into both my content on Instagram and on YouTube. And there aren't any really channels that have concerts that I like to watch. So instead, I'm gonna link all of my favorite concerts on YouTube. As you know, I love music festivals, I love concerts, and some of the best ways I connect with people is through music. Because of YouTube's copyright policy, I'm not really able to like start a series where I play a song and talk about it and do like a, you know, five songs of the week kind of video. So if you love music, you wanna discover new music, and you wanna see some of the best concerts on YouTube, I'm gonna link those in the description box first because I just really like sharing music. And let me know if you have ideas on how I can share songs and like turn that into a weekly series or something because I have so many playlists on Spotify that I meticulously curate and I would love to find a way to include that into my State of Kate stuff. The first up is Anders Ericsson and Anders is a bartender and he basically teaches you all about mixology from his home and his girlfriend shoots everything and then she'll like pop in and try his drinks and it's just really cute. He's really entertaining. He has a super fun personality and he also has this kind of like dark cozy setup that's really fun to watch. John and I have made several of his uh, cocktails and because of him, we now take shots of bitters. Uh, and so if you want, you can check out his, his video on the history of bitters, but he's definitely one of our favorite um, mixology or bartender focused channels. Next up, we have Amy Serrano. She's been on YouTube for ages. She's pretty big, so I'm sure a lot of you know of her. Um, she is just this incredible like fashion YouTuber. I think she had more of a beauty focus back in the day, but she does other things too, like you know, certain vlogs here and there, but really her content focuses on style these days. She's now living in Mexico City, which is really fun. My personal favorite videos that Amy does are her like style lookbook or restyling videos. For example, she'll take like Addison Rae, Margot Robbie, Camilla Cabello, and she'll just take their looks like on the red carpet or whatever, and she'll restyle them. And she puts together a mood board for everything and then fully goes through like designer runways and puts together cohesive outfits and looks for them based on who they are, both as a person and their personality and the kind of like star power that they're trying to emulate. Incredibly thoughtful videos and she has an impeccable taste for style. I would die for Amy to style me one day. Like literally, Amy, please can I hire you as a stylist? I probably can't afford you, but whatever, she's awesome. The next channel is Architectural Digest. Obviously AD is not something that is uh, a small channel, but I love AD videos so much. Particularly, I love the celebrity homes. I love any kind of intimate glimpse into someone's life, whether it's their beauty routine, um, any kind of routine or their home. And I really just love seeing the celebrity videos. John and I watch Architectural Digest all the time when we're just like winding down at the end of the night. Sometimes it's too late for us to watch a show. And John and I are currently in the process of getting pre-approved for a loan so that we can buy a house in LA. We're gonna be spending a month in LA in the month of August um, to look for a house. And so we're watching a lot of AD and really getting inspired about both architecture and interior design and just thinking about different things that we'd want in our house. So AD has been really fun as we, we think about our future. Next is Boldly Lauren. Lauren's a friend of mine and she's just a joy. She's a total delight. Her channel is like old school YouTube vibes, chilling with a friend, except she's a hairdresser and so she's like very knowledgeable about hair and hairstyling, whereas I used a diffuser for the first time today and it did not go well. She does these beautiful glam hairstyles and she's both talented and she's like relaxing, but she's also really eloquent and really sweet. I've had the pleasure of meeting her in person in Berkeley uh, a few months ago and I just adore her. So if you like those kind of like old school YouTube beauty videos, you'll love Lauren. Next up we have Bon Appetit, but not just the channel in general, a specific series called The Black Sheep. So The Black Sheep is a guy named Andre Mack and he's a black man in a heavily white dominated industry. So he's a Somme or a sommelier, which is like a wine expert and most of them are white men. And so 
Andre brings in a really cool, unique perspective as the black sheep on Bon Appetit's YouTube channel. And he makes wine fun, educational, and approachable. He really hits everything that I look for in a YouTube channel, which is a perfect balance between entertainment and education. Like that's how Anders is, um, that's how the black sheep is. And so he'll do educational videos that are like, why every wine glass is designed to be a certain way, or how to read a wine label. And he'll also do really fun videos like pairing fast food with different wines or like taste testing celebrity wines. And so it's just always a balance of like education and entertainment. And I, I just think that he's an absolute joy. So if you enjoy wine and you just wanna learn a little bit more about it, I think that is the best place to start. Okay, so <laughs> another one I adore is Brandy TV. Brandy is a very avid weed smoker and she basically eats a bunch of edibles on camera and she does like full character transformations while she is stoned out of her goddamn mind. And she's so sweet and so pure and so funny. She actually just came out and told a story about how she went to prison and she even made that super funny and entertaining. And she's just like a total sweetheart, a joy to watch. She's hilarious. You will be laughing your ass off to her videos. So if you're in a bad mood, I highly suggest Brandy TV. She's a goddamn delight. Buffalo Beauty Boy. Ted is awesome. He lives in Buffalo and he loves beauty and he's a hairdresser and has amazing hair and oh my God, I would die for him to do my hair one day, but that's not the point. Another channel that is just like old school YouTube vibes, sitting down with a friend, no fancy bells and whistles, you know, no fancy backdrop or anything like that. Just chilling with a friend. His personality is so warm and so inviting, bubbly, but real. He's just like, just, just such a wonderful person. So if you're in a bad mood, Buffalo Beauty Boy is another channel I would check out. He's just, he's, yeah, another channel who's just like a goddamn delight. Kate the Great's another beauty channel. And one thing I really love about her is she is bold and unapologetic and her mission to curate a community of like-minded individuals that align with her values and, and her political views. So I have a lot of respect for that, but also her videos are very much like beauty plus entertainment. So she reviews like skincare and makeup and all that, but she definitely has like an entertainment element to her videos because she was a performer. So my favorite videos, I would say like the runner up in her content is her like, I followed a Jaclyn Hill tutorial videos. Those make me laugh really hard. But recently she did a Samantha Jones watches the Sex in the City reboot series. Brilliant. She wrote that with her partner, Randy, and it's just like top notch YouTube. So I'll probably link that one in the description box below because her as Samantha Jones is just fantastic. Okay, the next one's Devin Lee Carlson. She is a model. She's a co-founder of Wildflower Cases. Um, they make iPhone cases. Her videos I would describe as like, model reality TV, <laughs> it's just fluff. It's like, if I wanna watch a hot girl trying on designer clothes, living her like hot girl LA life with her like hot girl model, model friends, like that's what I watch. She also has a really unique sense of style that I respect. It's like nothing I would ever wear, but I really love that she makes super bold choices. Um, and I just really enjoy following her videos. She seems like she has the most like wonderful, authentic group of friends. It's just like perfect, reality TV, like a glimpse into like a model's life. Okay, the next one's Dr. Romney's channel, which I've talked about in several videos. Um, sh her channel is all about narcissistic abuse. So if you've suffered from any kind of trauma, especially narcissistic abuse, I highly recommend checking out her channel because she's helped me grow and really learn a lot. And I think the video I'll link below is how to think about your narcissistic parent because that's the one that really uh, gave me breakthroughs initially. The next channel is Emma Hill. Um, she is a British fashion blogger. Her clothes that she puts together are very much minimal neutral, sophisticated and or workwear attire. I don't really know the proper term for it, but just meaning like she wears a lot of blazers, a lot of loafers, like much more of a sophisticated preppy style. And even though that's typically not what I gravitate towards, my personal style is like one part comfortable, one part athletic, one part like 70s, California, one part Gwen Stefani. I don't really know if I have a personal style, but anyways, I enjoy sometimes going to her channel for really like well done pieces. She makes a lot of recommendations for like beautiful, long lasting, high quality sweaters and coats. And I like the way that she 
has a very curated, minimal collection of items and she rotates every season. Um, so her videos are just really wonderful to watch, very relaxing, um, and I enjoy her personality too. The next one is a YouTube channel called Found My Fitness and the brain behind that channel is Dr. Rhonda Patrick. She's a biomedical scientist and she's, she's amazing. She'll teach you everything you ever need to know about like healthy things. Through her channel, I really discovered the power of hot and cold therapy, which I do on a regular basis now about four times a week with John. So we like get our hot tub ripping hot at 104 degrees for about 20 minutes to get the health benefits for your heart. And then we do like five minutes in the cold dip and then kind of bounce back and forth. Um, and I've seen amazing improvements like for us after workouts for better muscle recovery and relaxation, the heat is really helpful, but for chronic pain and inflammation, the cold pool is what's really necessary. She also has an Instagram where she um, talks about like the latest studies. So she'll say like, let me just read some of her highlights, the headlines, omega-3 improved executive function and increased brain volume or 50% of all dementia begins with breakdown of the smallest vessels in the brain, or sulforaphane reduced SARS-CoV-2 lung replication by 30 fold. She bases everything in real science and breaks it down on like a biomedical level. Next is First We Feast, um, but I don't really watch any of their videos except for hot ones. Are you coming? Oh, what you doing? Not a big deal, just some cheese and some water. Sexy. John just took Thumper for a walk, so I have you all to myself now. First we feast. I don't really watch any of the videos on their channel except for Hot Ones. If you don't know Hot Ones, what are you doing? Oh my God, Hot Ones is the best. So there's this host, Sean Evans, and he interviews celebrities, but it's not just that. It's not a boring celebrity interview. They go through a progressively hot, hot sauce lineup, like chicken wings with hot sauce. And as the sauces get hotter, the questions get detailed and difficult to answer. And you watch the celebrities basically start off super poised and like in their, you know, their character, they're like in performance mode. Um, and they just break down to absolute like sweating, snot, spit, freaking out, pacing around the room, like, tossing back milk, like it really breaks them down to like who they are on a primal level. And some crazy shit has gone down on the show. Like one time a guy shit his pants. I loved Paul Rudd, Charlize Theron, Kristen Bell, Nick Offerman, Tom Segura, Elizabeth Olsen, Dave Grohl, Selma Hayek. Selma was a G. Hassan Minaj, Megan Thee Stallion, Seth Rogen, Kamel Nanjani, Simu Liu, love him. Jacob Elordi, that was a really nice one. Oh, Colin Farrell, that was my favorite. It was recent. Colin Farrell and Sean Evans, I just love when it turns into a total conversation and they completely forget that there are cameras there. Colin Farrell is clearly like very much an extrovert who's like talking, asking Sean questions. They basically just like fall in love with each other and you can tell that they like wanted to hang out. So fun to watch. And uh, you should watch Hot Ones because John and I are gonna do a Hot Ones together. John is gonna interview me. Ugh and we're gonna eat a bunch of spicy wings and see how it goes. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna get through it. I'm a fucking baby when it comes to hot sauce. We bought all of the Hot Ones hot sauces and we just need to find a place where we can get chicken wings. We're like in this very remote location in California. Like it is not easy to get things around here. I think we're gonna have to just like bite the bullet and find some chicken nuggets somewhere and do it that way, but we're gonna do our own hot ones, so stay tuned. Next, we have Gentle Whispering. Um, Maria is an ASMR creator. I feel like she was the first to really make it big and hit a million. She has the most wonderful, soothing voice and personality. She's just so relaxing, so if I'm having a, tr a hard time falling asleep at night, I will put on Gentle Whispering and you know, she just has every kind of ASMR and I just, I love her. Another ASMR channel is Goodnight Moon. The ones that I adore are the ones where she puts on full intricate sets and kind of transforms you into like a time period. So she does like 1920s perfume shop ASMR. She will be decked out, dressed to the nines in like full 1920s gear, or she'll be like a speakeasy bartender from the 20s. And she like puts on the accent and she has like all the makeup and the jewels and everything. And you like, you feel like you're there. Her sets are incredible. 
Her performance is incredible, but I just find that really engaging. So the combination of like the narrative that she um, creates and also how intricate her sets and costumes are make for an incredible ASMR channel. And she's almost at a million subscribers, so she's pretty big. Oh, the next one. The one that inspired this video is actually Hot Mode, another pretty big channel. I think he's got upwards of like 700,000 subscribers. If you are just getting into style content or you really enjoy fashion, Hot Mode is fantastic. His name's Luke Marr, he lives in New York City, and he is just a fucking fashion encyclopedia. He knows everything about everything. He knows all of like fashion history. When most other channels are just a normal person talking about personal style and fashion, this is different because this is extraordinarily educational, but also really sassy and entertaining and fun. So right now, Luke Marr is doing a four part Met Gala breakdown series and he just puts every video into the context of fashion history and you learn so much about designers and why they do certain things and why this was created, what that's a reference to. And you're like, whoa, I had no idea fashion was so thoughtful and involved. It was really interesting. And Hot La Mode is so good that it is the one channel that John and I will like not miss a video of. Like if, if Hot La Mode posts a video, John and I are watching it and John loves it just as much as I do. Like it's gotten both of us really much more interested in curating our own personal style. Like we're both taking more risks and we're having a lot of fun with it. And really that's in part due to Hot La Mode. And I don't even watch the like Vogue seven days, seven outfits celebrity series anymore because I just wait for Hot La Mode to do an, a reaction video and he'll talk about like, okay, their style, what I wish, they had done here and there, or like, oh, that's amazing, that works. So entertaining, so extraordinarily educational. I just love it. Oh, Hot Mode is so good. And then we have Hope Mess Tom. Hope Mess Tom, I'm telling you right here, gonna be huge. Because they combine all of the elements that I think beauty YouTube is going, which is more authenticity, more genuine personality, more of a critical voice, entertainment, great makeup skills, and also a very minimal approach to beauty. Not in terms of the looks, but in terms of consumption. So Hope Mess Tom right now is a small channel having just hit a um, thousand subscribers, but gonna be huge one day. You heard it here first. Okay, next up, I hope I pronounce her name right. I believe it's pronounced like Jona Jinten. She is a Swedish YouTuber and she lives in an extremely remote part of Northern Sweden. It is rural. Like it is a cabin in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by nature and like her dog. That's it. She's an artist, so she does paintings, she does jewelry. She's one badass fucking lady. Like the elements are against her on a daily basis. She is like shoveling and trudging through snow and just like, it's badass. She does everything herself because you can't like hire people to come do things for you at your house. So she's just like a jack of all trades. And it's not only fascinating to watch her go about life and the challenges of life, in a place where the elements are very strong. But I believe that she's won a bunch of awards for best cinematography on YouTube. And if you click her video, you'll understand why. She has incredible drone footage of all of the beautiful places that she encounters uh, in Sweden. She like cuts massive blocks out of like frozen lake, takes them out and then jumps in there for her cold dips. She's just so badass and her channel is beautiful and it's relaxing. Her videos are ones that John and I watch when we're trying to fall asleep at night. They just give us such a sense of peace and I just adore her. So combining all of like the elements of her life and her story and who she is with the cinematography and the rural nature of Sweden, it's just like a match made in heaven. Another fashion channel is a new discovery for me. It's Karen Britchick. Uh, her name's Karen and she's a British chick. As she goes around the streets in every city and she films people wearing cool shit and she stops them and has a conversation with them and asks them what they're wearing. She has a lot of other videos on her channel, but I haven't watched those because I've just been catching up on her what were they wearing videos. And it's so cool. She just goes up to people on the street and is like, hey, what are you wearing? Can I film you for my YouTube channel? And people just talk all about their clothes and like the stories behind them, why they picked them. I just really love like intimate glimpses into 
a person's daily choices, you know, whether it's fashion, beauty, lifestyle, routines. I just really love like an intimate glimpse of a person. Since John and I are living in a remote part of Northern California for a year, well, less than a year now, we're gonna move out in January and we're looking for a house in LA, so we may move out sooner. We are completely isolated from the world. The only outfits people wear here are like Birkenstocks, boots, boot cut jeans, <laughs> things made out of hemp. Like you get the idea. It's like, it's crunchy and it's country. We're very out of touch with what people are wearing. And like one of the reasons we loved living on, in East LA is we got to watch all of the like really cool street style coming out of downtown. And we're so far removed from that. There just isn't a lot of like fashion happening in San Francisco. My point being that we have been isolated from fashion and street style for several years now. And YouTube channels are kind of the only way that we like see what people are wearing. And it just, it's really, really interesting to us. Even though we don't really have great style, we love watching people who do. Another beauty channel is Lauren May Beauty. This is a very new find for me, but I'm so glad that I discovered her channel. She's just so sweet and chill and cool. She just seems like a normal person you'd wanna hang out with, you know? Her videos, are the ones that remind me of old school YouTube, just with upgraded quality. She does have a channel with, I believe, like several hundred thousand followers, but she's totally remained having that, you know, approachable, friendly, old school YouTube vibe, just with better quality, and I love that. Ooh, another good one, Madeline De La Rosa. When I think of her YouTube channel, I just think of like creative direction. Her vlogs, I think, remind me of home because she lives in East LA. We've gone to the same places. Like, she's just someone that that if I ran into in person, I would wanna be friends with. All of her videos, like if she's doing like a sponsored video that's a product placement, she basically creates like a short film for it. Like creatively, aesthetically, visually, her content is really great to watch. John loves her channel too because of that like art direction that she brings to them. When it comes to someone who does vlog content, She's the cream of the crop. Matilda on video, I'm sure you all know her. She has, you know, several hundred thousand followers. She does all overhead beauty videos. Content of her hands, swatching products, you know, laying products out. And not only is that really relaxing, but I think it's really unique that her content is solely focused on the product. And she brings a really wonderful sort of minimal, more natural approach to beauty. She also just has such a wonderful, soothing voice to listen to. So I typically watch her videos at night when I'm relaxing or like when I'm doing my nails and I'm a little stressed out at work. John always loves when I'm watching Matilda because he's like, oh, I love her every time he hears her voice in the background. Ooh, this is a good one. Okay, Mila Tequila. This bitch only has like five videos, I think, but several hundred thousand subscribers or something like that. Like she is incredible and it's for a reason. If you are a fan of old school Y2K celebrity drama, look no further. Tara Brooke, I'm looking at you. You better know Mila Tequila. She will break down like the life of Britney Spears or Lindsay Lohan or Amanda Bynes or break down the story of the bling ring. So for example, she has a video that's two hours and 19 minutes long. That's the eras of an icon, Britney Spears. It's literally breaking down everything we know about Britney Spears and her life with pictures and fun commentary. She also has MTV's The Hills, a 2000s time capsule that's 50 minutes long. Grab yourself a drink, sit down, watch some Mila tequila, be transported back into your Y2K times. There are so many channels like this, but she does it in a very different way where there are so many different pictures and footage and resources and she did her work. Like she puts in work getting like factual information about these celebrities in the perspective of how traumatized those women were and how terrible society treated them. But unfortunately, with more fame and success comes more attention to Britney's personal life. And at that time, the thing that they were most obsessed with was her relationship with fellow teen pop idol, Justin Timberlake. And it's not hard to see why. It's just her chatting on like a MacBook camera with like images and footage and so many resources from the period with like an encyclopedic brain for Y2K history. Oh, she's so fucking good. The next one is My Analog Journal, by far my favorite music channel on YouTube. So for you to understand why I love My Analog Journal so much, let me read to you some of the titles of the videos, meaning some of the different music sets they have when they bring in guests. Japanese jazz records, 
Tropical Zook, British Funk and Street Soul, Disco Boogie Records from Ghana, Calypso Funk and Island Grooves, Swedish Grooves, and these are all DJs just doing live sets. I love Colombian salsa. I love reggae inspired Japanese city pop. I love Brazilian samba, French Caribbean, African Grooves vinyls, really good. I think my favorite though is Japanese jazz from 70s vinyl. Ugh. Incredible. Any and all of their sets are just a vibe. They're a fucking vibe. You throw them on, they're all like 45 minutes long. You've got a nice little dinner party there. You can put them in the background. If you wanna be exposed to so many different sounds from around the world, look no further than my analog journal. One of my favorites. Then we have Painted by Spencer, who's a makeup artist who does super glam, very like base product heavy makeup that I would literally never wear, but I love watching. He has a really wonderful, super sweet personality. It's just fun to watch someone do their art on people, you know, it's really relaxing. But I also learn a lot from him as well on some of his techniques. It's super glam, but I find that to be sometimes the videos that I prefer watching because they're so different from what I do for myself. And I learn a lot along the way. Okay, gotta plug this one. My favorite news source of all time is the PBS NewsHour. You can watch them on YouTube. They're every day, uh, every weekday, Monday through Friday. That's my place for unbiased reporting. And so I made the decision two years ago during the election to shut out all biased reporting. Um, I no longer get any news on social media. I don't watch CNN. I don't watch Fox. I get my news from PBS and NPR public funded, unbiased journalists. The program's led by Judy Woodruff and um, they also have a congressional correspondent, Lisa Desjardins, who has taught me so much about Congress. I do follow her on Twitter because she's in Congress like constantly and just tweeting about the process, how things work. And because nothing has like a narrative or a spin or fear tactics, like, you know, if you think about mainstream media, they want to make you more fearful because they want um, to drive views. The more scared you are, the more you tune in. Whereas if you get your reporting from unbiased news sources, you can form your own opinion yourself based on factual information. And that's my little plug for the PBS NewsHour. Plus it's free and you can watch it on YouTube. The next channel is called Peaceful Cuisine and I watch this when I'm trying to fall asleep at night, but I don't want any talking or a lot of noise. It's just this dude who's a vegan and makes vegan desserts. The cinematography is beautiful. It's just gorgeously shot and it's an ASMR kind of video I love because there's no talking. It's just like watching someone do their work and I love that. Another beauty channel I love is Rudy Berry. I've definitely talked about her a couple times but wanted to include her because I've never really described her channel. Rudy Berry is another one that you just fall in love with. She just seems like somebody you wanna hang out with, super chill, she's based in Nashville. Instead of like a lot of looks and tutorials, she's much more focused on product reviews for sensitive skin. Her primary platform is TikTok. So if you really like being on top of new beauty launches, definitely follow Rudy on TikTok and Instagram. She posts daily content there, but I obviously prefer YouTube channels because I like getting to know people. I like the feeling of connection and you know, short form content doesn't really allow you to get to know a person very well. So I love Rudy's YouTube videos. She's also hilarious and she's just, yeah, she's another one who's just like a fucking joy to watch. Ooh, Sarah Lavender ASMR. This is my new favorite ASMR channel. Just a cool girl who moved to Mexico City because she wanted to improve her Spanish and I think that's badass. I love the way that her voice sounds on camera. My favorite videos that she does, which I'll link below, is ASMR bartender videos. So she'll do like, a mezcal tasting. And <laughs> clearly I'm super obsessed with like food and drink stuff and those kinds of videos combined with ASMR. Oh, but hers are so good. And instead of like a good night moon where there are these elaborate setups and costumes that really transport you, Sarah's videos are very simple. It's just like a room and she'll have like a bar and a couple bottles of booze and like that's your set and like you're imagining <laughs> that you're there and I love it. The next one's also ASMR. This is called Seaside Cafe Jazz and it's exactly how it sounds. 
They are videos that are animated, but kind of made to look like real life. And it's the point of view of just sitting at a seaside cafe with some jazz music playing and it's like looped for eight hours. So if I'm not working in my office and I just need a change of pace, a little bit more of a relaxing space, I'll go upstairs, I'll put on my seaside cafe jazz videos, I'll light a bunch of candles, put on my salt lamps, get in my comfy chair and I will work that way. And just having like that beautiful visual on my TV with the like calm jazz, sometimes it'll be like bossa nova music that I love. It's just such a beautiful setting. Oh, Steve the bartender. I love Steve the bartender. He's this big Aussie guy in Australia, obviously. And he's this wonderful friendly bartender. And he's made a little shtick out of his channel where he picks up the shaker bottle, he like shakes it and all seriously. And then he like looks to the side and like winks that, okay, whatever. We're not even gonna go there. Jesus. My first and only Kate's Corner video was um, months ago. I filmed myself doing a recreation of a cocktail he did called the Enzoni that was like gin and like muddled grapes and a little bit of Campari. It was so delicious. Steve the bartender really introduced me to a lot of cocktails that have become like staples for me, like the Enzoni. He is the reason why I fell in love with the whiskey sour. Oh, so good. Oh, another great beauty channel, Tara Brooke. Okay, so Tara is not just a friend of mine. I hope to meet her one day, but she's another person who was just like old school YouTube vibes. You are chilling in someone's bedroom and you're hanging out with them and you're talking about beauty, but then you're also talking about other stuff and then you're reminiscing about Y2K times and a lot of her content's very like nostalgic. So she does a lot of like shop my stash videos but she also does a lot of tag videos that I love or she'll do things like her video title is I'm not like the other girls. Popular makeup I just don't like. <laughs> She's deeply, deeply committed to not purchasing a lot of beauty. So if you like someone who's more of like a conscious consumer who keeps a minimal collection and like does a lot of shop my stash stuff, then definitely check out Tara. The next channel is the Garso Twins. Oh, I just love them. I cannot wait to meet them when I move back to LA. I think they live near downtown LA. Uh, they are twins and they have a beauty YouTube channel. So first off, it's cool to see uh, that dynamic on YouTube and like it's a little bit different than and just watching one person, like you're watching two people interact and talk about beauty and what they're using and really have a conversation with each other. My favorite videos that they do are five weekly favorites. And they're the ones who got me inspired to start talking about snacks. They talk about like Trader Joe's snacks all the time. Every video that's a five weekly faves has like a snack in it. <laughs> and like, I have like a list of like the Garso Twins Trader Joe's snacks that I like need to try. But beyond their snack recommendations, they have a lot of other stuff too, like general favorites, obviously a lot of beauty products, and they do individual beauty reviews as well. But not only that, Britta and Carly are the founders of Dyad, which is a luxury candle company based in LA. Dyad's Candle Pins and Needle is my number one all-time favorite candle. I am a fucking fan of Dyad. Like I'm like a diehard <laughs> Dyad fan. I have repurchased their candles. I actually, I'm due for another Dyad order. I really hope those candles are in stock. I'm gonna get backups of smoke and mirrors. I'm gonna get backups of pins and needles. I'm just obsessed. They also have perfume oils. Anyways, I've gone on long enough. They're brilliant. Ah, oh, another recent discovery for me is Teresa is dead. She's a beauty YouTuber who is everything that I've been missing in my subscriptions. She swears a lot, which is great because I swear a lot. She's snarky and she's confident and bold and I adore her. I fucking love her. The next one is Tokyo Explorer. Oh, hello. Meep. Meep. Old man John just coming home from a walk. So wait, I have a question for you, come here. If you had to pick one or a few favorite YouTube channels that we watch or that you watch on your own, what are they? I mean, I like Hot Limode. Hot Limode. That's that's a good one. I mean, AD is good, but it's not that good. Yep. It's, it's, yeah, it's AD. Bon Appetit, it's Black Sheep. A. Hey. I like watching LA real estate. <laughs> <laughs> what else do we watch? Oh, I, I like, oh, Anything the Coachella, you, you Coachella like. channel's great. Coachella channel, I'm getting to that next, yeah. Um, I don't know, I think I need the internet more. I think you killed it. Always. <laughs> I'll take my AdSense money now. Here's two pennies. The next channel is called Tokyo Explorer. So one of my favorite ways to watch ASMR is these kind of walking tours of different cities around the world. But my favorite ones are Tokyo. And there are a couple different channels here. So there's Tokyo Explorer and there's also Virtual Japan. There are a couple others too. I just forget the names and 
someone just like puts a steady cam on their head or their chest and they just walk around a city for hours. Sometimes it'll be like, Kyoto and there will be like cherry blossoms and temples everywhere or it'll be Tokyo and people are walking around a city and it's raining like they're just such beautiful videos That I think are the best way to really get to know a city if you can't actually be there because you just really get to see what they're like walking around and that's why I'm so obsessed with going to Tokyo one day. The next channel is called TPD TV and we've only watched one video <laughs> on this channel but basically it's like a bunch of British dudes that go to different music festivals and rate them from the perspective of getting general admission tickets and camping. So like none of the bells and whistles, you know, no like VIP tickets, no influencer shit. And they rate the festivals based on their experience. But even though I've only seen one of their videos, now I'm hooked on them. We watched them for the first time last week and I wanna go back and see all of their other festival experiences, maybe to see if there are other festivals I would like, but more so because it's just really fun to watch friends having fun. Like just a bunch of dudes shooting the shit, drinking and having a blast. Like that's my kind of a good time. Okay, next up we have Titi Sandra. I'm sure most of you know who she is. She's been on YouTube forever. I feel like I practically grew up with her. She has such a wonderful presence on YouTube. She's so authentic. Her content is really sophisticated. It's relaxing. It's approachable. We have very different preferences for makeup, but I still love watching her channel because I love watching her. She's another one of those creators who creates videos that are high quality while still maintaining that old school YouTube vibe of just hanging out with a friend. And more recently, I've just really been enjoying her style content. Like I think she posts that more on Instagram, but she has a really great sense of style. And like lately her style content on Instagram has just been so inspiring for me. I love her personal style, love her beauty choices. I love her like minimal makeup approach. I love her setup. She's just another one who's just a damn joy to watch. Very quick, we have Virtual Fireplace, which is just someone who films fireplaces for hours and hours and then puts them on YouTube. And I love the little crackles and pops that it gives. So if you're studying or maybe it's the holidays or you don't have your own fireplace, Put this on and you get the like really loud crackles and pops of a real fireplace, but in a bunch of different settings. So it's really relaxing, really great if you're studying or something like that. And then the last one is Vogue. I just love Vogue's videos. I also love like Harper's Bazaar, anything where you're kind of watching like celebrity beauty routines or like what's in my bag videos. I adore those. I think that they're really relaxing. I watch those on an almost daily basis. Okay, now here's my request for you. What are your favorite YouTube channels? If you can tell me a little bit about them so it's not just like me having to go like, look up all of these channels and see what they're about. If you can tell me just like a few of your favorite channels and why you love them, I would love some recommendations. I am always looking for more channels to discover. In my next video, I'm gonna show a little Sephora haul that I did recently, or maybe a hair routine with like how I like to curl my hair sometimes. Not sure yet, but keep your eyes peeled for that one. And if you made it this far, I hope you liked it. I hope you saw like how fucking enthusiastic I am about these channels. And uh, wherever you are, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.